Hey and welcome back to another video. Question is, are you ready to take your guitar playing and specifically your trad playing to the next level and discover some incredibly cool voicings? Well, in this video we're going to explore exactly that, which is the whole concept of replacing one of the notes within a triad with what we call a neighboring tone from the scale and then by making those simple tweaks to these basic triads, some simple substitutions, you'll be able to create some voicings that are rich in tone and full of color and really easy to play on the guitar because they're based around these simple three note triads. These new voicings are guaranteed to add some depth and interest to your worship guitar playing, helping you to create a sound that truly inspires, which is very important to do on the guitar. So let's dive in and unlock the power of triad note replacement. All right, so I believe this is video six in our series of triad transformation. So we've done a whole bunch of videos right up until now. If you've missed those videos where we went over the basics of triads and we looked at the five different ways in which you can transform triads, as well as some detailed teaching with some of the concepts, you'll be able to find the link to the playlist in the description. And then for this particular video, you can also go ahead and grab the cheat sheet as well as any tabs that will show you what we played on the guitar. Now, what we're gonna be looking at today is the concept of neighboring tones and then replacing a note within my triad. Remember our first triad transformation trick was by removing a note from the triad. That gave us those four two dyad voicings. Then we looked at rearranging the notes of the triads where we basically played the triads on single strings or as well as rearranging them in a way to give us open triads. So removing a note, rearranging the notes, those were the first two things we looked at. And now we're gonna look at replacing a note. So if we look at our triad shape like this, this in this case will be a G first inversion. And this is based in the key of G, so my scale will be. That means I can take my G triad and I can either go up or down to the previous note or the next note in the scale. Up or down, up or down. And then that's gonna give me six different voicings. So let's look at what does that actually mean. Well, the neighboring tone is not the note right next to the fret you're playing. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's two frets up or two frets down. Sometimes it's one fret down or one fret up. So how do you know when is it one fret down or one fret up or two frets down or two frets up? Well, that's where the neighboring tone comes in. As you can see right now on the screen, I'm gonna be playing a G major scale. and then I'm gonna play within that G major scale, I find this triad. So now I can either take the low, the highest note and, and I can go up to the next note in the scale. And in this instance, it's gonna give me what's known as a G add nine. Or I can go down from my highest note. And then I'm gonna get a G major seven. Or I can take my middle note go up, then I get a G6, or I can go down, and then I get a G add four in this instance, or I can go up, G sus four, or I can go down for a G sus two. So that means that this one voicing G major can become a G add nine, a G major seven, or a G, a G6, a G add four, or a G, a G sus four, a G sus two, or a G. And that's the whole concept of neighboring tones. I can do that for, if I play G over here, G sus four, G sus two, and G. I can do a G like this, a G add nine, a G major seven, a G six, or in this case again, the G add four. 
all I'm doing is I'm taking my triad and then I'm either going up or down up or down and that's going to give me six different triads I can also do it yeah so a G six or I can go down this is a tricky one to play but it sounds kind of cool once we play it like a cluster voicing like that I can go up from this G to a G sus 4 or down to a G sus 9 or I can go like this a G add 9 or a G made a 7 and back to a G now I know that doesn't sound like much I'm just showing you the concept where you can take the triad and then take any one of the notes within a triad either go up or down to the neighboring tones within the scale. So neighboring tone is simply, if I play this as a B, if I go up to the next note, it'll be a C, it's a neighboring tone. If I go down, it's gonna be an A, which is also a neighboring tone. The very important thing that you wanna pay attention to over here is the fact that when you play a triad, you are simply playing three notes, which those are your chord tones. But then in your scale, You've got seven notes before you start repeating it again. So that means seven minus three is four. So that means we have four non chord tones that are not part of that basic triad that you can go ahead and use to spice up your playing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do for you right now is I'm going to play that same progression we've looked at in previous videos, which is one, four, six, five. I'm going to go ahead and play that on the guitar in three different positions, but instead of playing one, four, six, five as the standard triads, I'm gonna play other shapes like one, four, six, and five. You'll be able to hear what that sounds like because it's gonna bring in some fresh sounds on the guitar that you might not normally play because you might just go for the standard triad but what this is now showing you is some additional notes that you can add. I'm going to do that with a slightly dirty tone and then we can go ahead and see what that sounds like. Here we go. All right, so let's have a look at what happened there. The first time, instead of playing a G major, I played this G add four. Then I went to a C sus two. Then for the E minor, I, I moved this note back, which gave me an E minor seven. Then I had a D sus four to a D. So these are the, the four chords. Right, and as you can hear in the example that I played, they give you some fresh sounds. The second time, instead of playing G, C, E, and D, I played G sus two, C sus two, E minor seven, and then added D add four. Some really good sounding voicings over there. And then for G, the third and final time, instead of playing G, C, 
E minor and D. I played this G sus2, C sus2, and then I had an E minor add 4, and then D sus4 to D. Now, of course, I kind of forced one of these triad transformations over every chord just for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, it's quite a game changer when you realize that you can replace one of the triad notes with a neighboring tone from the scale. And that leads to really unlocking a whole new world of awesome worship guitar voicings. Now, these voicings are not only easy to play since they are really just based around your simple triad shapes, but they also add a real beautiful depth and some richness to your sounds by adding in some of those other textures you might not think of when it comes to just playing standard chords on the guitar. So go ahead and keep experimenting with all these different note replacements and see how you can transform some of your favorite triads and even worship songs by introducing some of these new colors. Remember, this is part of our whole series. We'll link to the series. The playlist is in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because then you'll get notifications whenever we release new videos just like this one. And do us a favor. If you found value here, please share this video with one of your guitar playing friends and leave us a comment. It really helps us out to get these videos uh, in front of more people. In the next video, we're going to be exploring yet another exciting way to make triads work for you and kind of get more out of triads. So until then, keep practicing and I'll see you in the next video.